Uh, will Washington be a big test for Tom Brady? Nope. Not a big test at all. Um, this will be a warm-up lap for the race wow. to a Super Bowl well, champion. Can y'all cut this tape, please? <laughs> yeah, cut it. This is going Hold to on, crush let me frame your up. Career. Let me frame up if they're going to cut Marcellus it. What Marcellus just said is going to come back and haunt you so bad. Really? Really? Yes. I ain't please scared of ghosts. Please say it again. I ain't scared of no ghosts. Um, this will be a warm-up lap on the race to a Super Bowl championship <laughs> for Tom Brady <laughs> and the Buccaneers. Like, one, we <laughs> you are so silly. We have seen 20... Now one years of Tom Brady in pregame talk. Yes, sir. Uh, he's the opposite of Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather pre-fight is going to give you the business. Post-fight, no matter what he said, he's ready to shake your hand, be a gentleman, and say, hey, that was all for promotion. Brady's the opposite. Brady's the one that's going to go out there and give you blah, blah, blah talk. He, don't believe any pregame Tom Brady talk because he's going to be complimentary no matter what the opponent is. And this isn't a, a formidable opponent on defense, especially up front with the defensive line, but not in totality. Let's just be real about this. If Tom Brady were playing the Inglewood Pop Warner team that I used to play for, you know what Tom Brady would say pregame? It's a lot of little quick guys out there right now. You know, you got to watch for them, you know? <laughs> like, Tom Brady is going to always be complimentary. But let's talk about why he should be complimentary of his own more so than what he's going to face in Washington. Tampa's only allowed 22 sacks this entire year, 21 to Tom Brady, third fewest in the NFL. Okay, let's do some math over there, math wizard. 1.3 sacks per game allowed by his hogs up front. Tell me this, Acho. Let's just say they just play average football. Yes, not sir. better, not worse, just average. Giving up 1.3 sacks a game. I don't know what the hell a .3 sack is. It like barely got them. <laughs> You think the Washington football team with no offense and don't – we don't even know who the quarterback's going to be – is going to be able to put up enough points to beat Tom Brady and the Buccaneers with all those weapons and how hot they are going into the playoffs? As my man Mark Jackson says in his NBA broadcast, what's better than a great defense? A better offense. And that's what's going to happen. I think their defense is great. Unfortunately, it's going to see a greater offense, and it's going to be curtains. I respect you. you got to. Yes. Come on, man. I the only thing I remember Mark Jackson saying was, Mama, there go that man. <laughs> That's the only thing I ever hear from Mark Jackson. Right, right. I'm going to give it to you like this. Um, Washington will be a huge test for Tom Brady. Oh. And it's very simple. Marcellus, if I were to tell you mm. that Tom Brady was going up against a team with an 83% winning percentage, the number six team in sacks in the NFL, yeah. and the second best defense, would you say, yeah, that might be a test? <laughs> that might be a test. That might be a test, right? That's what test. I would say. Yeah, I would. Well, y'all have to remember, we must delineate and break down who Washington is. Because seven and nine Washington is not the Washington that Tom Brady's Buccaneers are going to be seeing. I like. See, because Tom Brady's Bucks aren't going to be facing that one in five Dwayne Haskins-led Washington team. Or that one in three Kyle Allen-led Washington <clears> team. <throat> Tom Brady is going to be facing that five and one. Alex Smith led Washington team. You think that Washington team is dangerous? See, that Washington team wins 83% of its games. That Washington team is a team that Tom Brady is going to have to go up in that cold weather, which Tom Brady already said he does not want to venture <laughs> to. And that's the team that Tom Brady is going to have to face. So if you're looking at the seven and nine Washington team that was led by Haskins, nah, they're not all that scary. They're not that intimidating. Uh. But this Washington team, this Washington team is a problem. Well, let's bring in Fox NFL uh. analyst Greg Jennings to get his perspective, his opinions. Yeah. He saw the GOAT Tom Brady in person just last week. So, Greg, will Washington be a big test for Tom Brady? Absolutely. My dog. Absolutely, they will be My a big dog. test. They'll be the greatest test of the season for this team, not <laughs> just because of what they present from a, a personnel perspective. Talk but about it. That's the approach that Tom Brady is going to take. And this is the most important game of the season because everything depends on this game. The results of what they really want, what they're really chasing, what Marcellus is talking about, weighs on this game. That's why it's going to be the mm. biggest test. Mm. Now, when you talk about what they have as far as personnel and matchups, this is a huge test because over the course of Tom Brady's career, We've seen great pass rush off mm -hmm. the edge, mm -hmm. but we haven't seen every single time Tom Brady's on the field, great pass rush both off the edge as well as the interior pass rush. This is what the Washington football team poses. And when you look at the course of Tom Brady's career, what he struggled with most is interior <laughs> pass rush. Mm. Why? Because he's not a, he's not a, pocket pa he's mm. not a passer that's going to beat you outside of the pocket. 
He likes to climb that pocket. That yeah. means step up and navigate that pocket where that pass rush lacks. And typically it lacks from the interior. And this Washington team can collapse that interior. And so when I look at that, this is why they pose a huge threat because they're extremely active. Even if Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers want to go horizontal passing game, they get their hands up, they get their they get balls, not bat it down. So you can't always elude and go to that quick game horizontally and then vertically. We know that they can get after the passer. Think about what the New Orleans Saints posed against Tom Brady. Mm. Interior pass rush mm. as well as exterior pass rush, outside edge rushers. When you have that combination, it's trouble typically for the Tampa Bay <laughs> Buccaneers. Yeah, he is out there preaching. You know I love me some Greg Jennings doing his job right now as a commentator, <laughs> trying to make sure he keeps all of our interests glued to the tube. This is going to be a contentious ball game. That's what you do in ball game. <laughs> I've watched games before, and the team is losing by 57,000 points. And I hear the commentator saying, you know, this fourth quarter, anything can happen. I'm like, no, it can't. Absolutely. It can't. So, Greg, <laughs> let's just be real. We're on a different show right now. You can talk to us. We're all former players, remember? Let's keep it. <laughs> one thou hour up here. This is going to be a blowout. I'm going to tell you why. My man Acho gave me the secret sauce to why this is going to be a blowout. He said, this is not a 7-9 Washington football team. Oh, no, let's look at them in recent history. Alex Smith team. We don't even know if Alex Smith is going to be capable to play the entire game. But I digress. So let's use recent history against Washington. What's their record in the last four games? Anybody? Two and two. Hmm. Last time I checked, that sounds like average. That sounds like you win a couple, you lose a couple. What is Tampa's record in the last four? Ooh, four and oh. Let's go deeper than that. They've won those games by an average score of 37 to 19. I want to go out there and profess that's going to be the score of this game. 37 to 19, the same average score has been the last four weeks for Tampa Bay. Anybody mad at that? I'm not. Okay, let's talk about them finishing top three in the NFL in passing yards and touchdowns. And no NFC team had a better point differential or yardage differential than the Buccaneers over these four weeks. What are y'all talking about? Oh, everybody keep talking about Chase Young and them boys up, uh, up front that are killers. They are. But let me tell you one thing that I learned from 10 years of experience of playing D-line in the NFL. The best offensive lineman on the field is a decisive quarterback. Oh, did I just hit y'all with a bar? It's not the guy up front. It's the one with the ball in his hand. Playing against Peyton Manning all those years. Playing against Tom Brady all those years. Yeah, 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 yeah. You do your best move. You got there. Where'd that ball go? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do it. Then all of a sudden, you started to feel a little defeated and a little winded. But you say, I'm going to speed it up. I'm going to really get to him. Oh, now you're leaving yourself vulnerable because your technique is now going to be flawed. The point of this is, I think the guys up front are going to do damage, do great. But I've seen too many performances in the NFL Two sacks, three sacks, four sacks, five sacks, and still get wiped off the floor, off the field. So I think up front they're going to make some noise, but it's not going to be enough with the offense they possess. Hey, big bro, what did you say was the name of that Inglewood High School team? Inglewood Pop Warner that I played for? Inglewood Pop Warner. I played Warner. for Inglewood Mohawks. So ah, I respect it. Inglewood See, Family Tree. You must think you up here going against some high school kids in this conversation. Because you've given me Pop some Warner. high school quality takes, big dog. Pop Warner. Uh, whatever the heck it is, <laughs> that's what you think you're going up against. Babies. Tom Brady, over the course of those four games, that winning streak oh, you don't mentioned, do that. Don't do that. Uh, three of those four wins came against teams without a head coach. One team was on their third string head coach and second string and then third string quarterback all within that same game. But I digress because I ain't even going to kill you on that point. Here, I'm going to get you. My dog. The question on the floor is very simple. Is Washington going to be a big test for Tom Brady? Well, Washington's in the playoffs. Every playoff <laughs> team Tom Brady has faced has been a big test for Tom Brady. Mm. I'm going to let y'all sit on that real quick. Ooh. Marinate on that joint. Marinate. Every playoff team Tom Brady faced this season was a big test. I'll remind y'all, Tom Brady is only one in four versus <clears> playoff teams. I'm going to go down the list just to jog y'all's memory. Week one, New Orleans Saints, they were a playoff team. Oh, that was a big test. Uh, Tom Brady's Bucks lost. Tom Brady had two touchdowns, two picks. Uh-oh. Uh, later on, you see the Chicago Bears. That was a big test for Tom Brady. Oh, Tom Brady's Bucks, they, they lost. Tom Brady had one touchdown, no interceptions. Ah, uh, next, the Green Bay Packers. The Bucks blew them boys out. But it was really because of the Bucks' defense, because even that was a test for Tom Brady. Tom Brady only had 166 yards in that game. Okay, then you face two more playoff teams back to back weeks. He had to face the Rams. He had to face the Chiefs. Five total touchdowns, four interceptions, lost both of those games. Every time 
Tom Brady has faced a playoff team this season, it has always been a big test. Y'all look at the numbers. One in five versus playoff teams, 10 and 0 versus everybody else. 60% completion playoff teams, 69 versus everybody else. 10 and 9 touchdown interception ratio playoff teams, 30 and 3 versus everybody else. Marcellus Wiley, you have to be willfully ignorant to look at the numbers versus playoff I teams cut. and look at the rest of the <laughs> opponents <laughs> and tell me that Tom Brady is not in for a big test. Oh, he went there. <laughs> yeah, I I'm with you, Acho, oh. but for me... It, it's a lot of other reasons that are going to play a part in this game that we're missing. Oh, when you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, do I like this team? I do, but they're missing a key component to their defense this weekend. Devin White, their mm. their, their linebacker that True. is a captain on that team that had over 100 tackles, almost 10 sacks. That is unheard of at the linebacker position. And so when you look at that, you look at what you're going to miss. Obviously, you stop the run. The Washington football team, what do they want to do? They want to run the ball. And so they win there. But when you look defensively, and this is where the problem arises, and this is what will pose the issue. The New Orleans Saints gave it to them. The Chicago Bears did it. This is the problem. When you have active guys up front that can collapse the pocket on Tom Brady, I hear you. One of the greatest assets to have, Marcellus, is a quarterback that can get rid of the ball. They mm. help solidify your protection. Mm. But length and activity and disruption is what negates even a quick passer. And that's what the Washington football team poses. They, they have length. They have guys that can collapse the pocket. I will continue to harp on this point. I'm not saying that the Washington football team is going to win, but this is going to be a challenge up front for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady understands that. Oh, man. Y'all, oh, golly. Did we play at three different NFLs? Like, what's going on here? Ocho over here talking about oh, Tom Brady can only be teams with no coaches. Oh, uh, okay. That's fine, Ocho. What about being a team with no quarterback? Because there's going to be a quarterback carousel out there. I think that fits right into what Brady does. According to you, Ocho, rotating quarterbacks in the, in the postseason. Good luck with that. All right. Acho wants to tell me that Brady struggles against all playoff teams. Yes, sir. Let's be real. All playoff teams aren't created equal. Let's be real. This is the NFC least playoff team. That team has a losing record. But Acho wants to make you think they're the same as the Kansas City Chiefs because all playoff teams are created equal. Stop lying to the people. Last but most importantly, they can't score. Do y'all know if the Washington football team is ranked 30th in total offense? So even if they go out there, and I've been on a number one ranked defense before, number one scoring defense before, and you could have a tremendous outing as a defense. You know what that means? Seven, 14, 17 points. But if we don't put up points to match that or to exceed that, guess what we do, Acho? We lose that ball game. And then once we realize, hey, man, we're not going to put up any points as, a, as an offense, defense, hold on, hold on, hold your water. It starts to frustrate. It starts to undermine. And next thing you know, the lead starts to widen. I just see this game going like that. Once again, the score will be 37 to 19. I'm going to give y'all this real quick, and I'm going to let y'all go home. Look, people, Bruce Arians has played in three playoff games. He's lost two of them. Two of them that he has lost have been to head coach Ron Rivera. Oh, and by the way, uh. he lost to a Ron Rivera team when they were 7-9. and nine. Sleep on that, Marcel.